Hi everyone, my name is King IV and this is Introduction to IDEA. In today's lesson, we'll be talking about categorizing data. If you haven't checked out the previous two lessons, the IDEA software and importing data, I'd recommend that you check those out before watching this video. So let's go ahead and get started. So categorizing data is a really great way to understand and perform some really basic analysis around your data so that you can make decisions, better understand your data, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go to the country admissions file. So hopefully you've imported this file. If you haven't, go ahead and start importing it. And we're going to start with summarization. So summarization, you can either summarize, in this case, the goal of summarization is basically to create categories and then subtotal an amount. So here I'm going to summarize by country and I'm going to subtotal carbon. There's a number of different options here. If you use quick summarization, it's just going to do this the subtotal. Uh, we're not going to do that. You include percentages in the output database. It's not too common that you would, but it, there are instances where you would. Uh, there's different, different statistics that you can include here. So I include maximum, minimum, standard deviation, variance, and average, all really useful ones. And then you can create a result as well, which basically just creates like a temporary table uh, that you can check out within your own table rather than creating a new data set. So here I'm going to call this country carbon summary. And I'm going to put OK. And now you'll see here, for example, Albania I have 20 records, which is good to know. Uh, the total sum of carbon that Albania has exported in this particular time frame is 19.5. Five, three. You'll see the maximum, you'll see the minimum, you'll see the average. So it's pretty interesting. You'll see the, also the standard deviation. So it could provide you some really good detail. You can also take a look at who has the highest total. You can see China. Who has the highest max? You can see it's China as well. Uh, minimum. So again, you'll see that the highest minimum is actually the United States. So it provides you some really good insights around your data. So you can use that to make decisions. If you want to see any particular data set, you can click on the 20 here and you'll be able to see them here. And then, well, you can save them, print them, or whatever you want to do it with those, those particular data sets. So let's go ahead and take a look at the customer data set. And we're going to work on stratification. So stratification is a really great way to understand your data. So you can split into to various groups. So here we're going to increment by 100,000. And it's pretty simple. All you have to do is set the limit. In this case, I'm going to set it at 1. And then you just have to click on these to create the various groups. So I'm going to create six groups here. And I'm going to field to stratify on. It's going to be credit limit. Oh, OK. Looks like I have to do this again. That's fine. So perfect. So you can see all these various limits. This may be a little bit too high. And then you can as well you can include totals. I like to total on the same field that I'm going to stratify by. You don't necessarily need to. You could, for example, you could stratify on the age of your customer versus the amount of revenue that you obtained. And that's uh, where you would use different ones. You can put a criteria if you want to filter your data. In this case, we don't want to. I, I'm just going to create a result. We don't need to necessarily create a database. Press OK. Now you'll see here. 95% of your customers, the number of records, is between 2,000 and 102,000. That's pretty interesting, but only 22% of the limit. And as you move up, you'll see that, oh, wow, you'll see, for example, lower limit, there's zero because it makes sense. Like they started you with the lowest value of the credit limit, which is 2,000. Uh, but the upper limit, which actually exceeded 602,000, only makes up 1.17% of the records, but makes up 66% of the total. So if you really want to target, and you can, in this case, we're going to click display, you can see here, who are these individuals? Why do they have such high credit limits? Maybe it makes sense. Maybe it doesn't make sense. Uh, we can certainly take a look and, and analyze that further. And as well, you can extract that if you wish. So before moving on and taking a look at aging, let's, let's uh, import some data. So we're going to go to home desktop and I believe it's a Microsoft Excel file and we're going to import outstanding receivables. So if you haven't checked out the previous video on how to do this, I'll recommend that you go ahead and do that. So now here we have transaction dates and hypothetically, let's say that it is March 31st, 20, no, let's say um, 
June 30th, 20, 2014 as our, our date. And we're going to be using the aging calculation. So here, we're going to put the date age. We're going to put 2015, 06, 30. Uh, criteria, we're not going to filter anything. The aging field is going to be the transaction date. We're going to subtotal the amount. We're going to put them into these default buckets. I'm just going to create a result. I don't necessarily need to create a table, but you could if you wanted to. Press OK. And now I see here that majority of my transactions, oh, because I put 20. So let me do that one more time. So I can actually rerun it. No. Rerun this portion, change this to 2014. And this gives a better uh, understanding of the data. So you can see here, three records are from within uh, between 61 and 90 days, uh, another four between 91 and uh, 120, another four between 121 and 150, and then one be that's uh, 180. So again, you can take a look at this particular record. You can see that it was from January 30th, 2014, which provides you some really good insight around your data that you can use uh, as part of, part of your analysis. So it's, that's great. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to uh, charts. So let's create some charts here. So here we can have our X value be, you can see there's a number of different charts that are available. We'll talk more about visualization a little bit later, but these are some just basic charts that you can check out. So our Y value is going to be the, the credit limit, which is going to be how long the bars are. We can put the title. So X value is going to be country. Let's call it country. And then let's call the Y credit limit. And then we'll call this credit limit by country. Perfect. You can show legend. In this case, of our, we are going to show legend. We won't make it 3D. We'll show grid lines. And we'll go ahead. And there you go. So now you can see here, take a look at your data. You can also as well display these records. So you can see Ireland, someone from Ireland, or this one particular person from Ireland makes up a very large amount. You can see China. You can see Finland. You can see the US have very high totals. So really good way of looking at your data and analyzing it further. So that's all I want to cover. I'm not going to cover pivot tables because to be honest, uh, I don't feel like it's that necessarily useful uh, in this context. And some people do use it, uh, but I find there's other functions and other features that you, sh you should be focusing on instead of pivot tables. But if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. And I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.